I'm posting this video to address a few misconceptions that may have arisen about the couple of videos that I've been posting lately in which I announced that I was not going to call myself an atheist anymore, but instead I was going to call myself a diatheist. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that term, that term that I came up with, that I pulled out of somewhere, and I'm going to clarify my position in the next couple of days, couple of weeks, whatever long, however long it takes, but in the meantime a couple of misunderstandings have arisen and that is in no small measure due to the way I've been presenting these things, so I accept full responsibility for that. Um, I suppose it's understandable with something new, something that people haven't heard about, that misunderstandings can arise and it is up to me to make sure that these things don't happen or that they get stamped out as soon as possible. So let me try and do that here. Um, first of all, uh, a couple of people have pointed out, listening to the things I've mentioned, that what I am saying is not necessarily all that incompatible with atheism. And I fully agree with that. There is no need to look for dichotomy here. You see, I said that I was going to call myself a diatheist instead of an atheist, but what I call myself and my decision to call myself one thing rather than another thing does not imply that the two must necessarily therefore be mutually exclusive in any way. That is not exactly what I meant. Uh, it is just that I decided to start applying this new label to myself because with a bit of explanation, with a bit of clarification on my part, I would hope that that helps explain my point a bit better than if I just keep on calling myself an atheist and people have to keep on trying to guess what particular flavor of atheist I actually am. Because diatheism, in the end, is not incompatible with atheism. Diatheism in the end, is an atheistic point of view. So if some of you decide that you'd much rather continue calling me an atheist, then that is perfectly fine with me and I have no objections to that. I will continue calling myself a diatheist just because I want to be different to everybody else. <laughs> no. But I also, you know, I think it, it engenders a bit of discussion, it engenders people thinking about these things afresh and maybe it kind of fosters a bit of dialogue and discussion and, and that's a good thing as well. So just to get back to what the atheism actually is and first of all the term itself, this prefix dia, dia is a little bit confusing and Again, you know, that is understandable because a lot of people will look at the word and think, oh, it's di-atheism. And that's not what it is. It's dia-theism. I would have preferred to use a term like trans-theism, maybe, for, to label my position. But that term had already been taken. That's the problem. That term had already been taken. It means something completely different. It has been slapped onto a completely different philosophical outlook on life. So I needed to look for a different prefix and dia kind of fitted the bill a little bit. What I see it as, what I see the atheism as, is as a cutting through the waffle. And that is why dia is a good prefix to use because it is kind of means through, across, cutting across, that sort of thing. Cutting across the waffle. A refusal to allow myself to be led down the garden path by people who are trying to proselytize their belief in something they call a deity, a god or whatever. Because an awful lot of people allow themselves to be led down that garden path. They argue the minutiae of some person's 
deity, this god thing that this person claims to believe in, and they go around in circles arguing about whether this god is good, bad, or indifferent, whether, you know, that god is worthy of worship or not, or whatever, or whether a you know, the God can be omnipotent or not, or whether it has lied or is capable of lying. Arguments like that I see happening all the time. And my position is, let's get back to the basics and realize that when people who try to proselytize their belief in a God, and I am very clear that I am talking about those people who are trying to sell their God to you. I am not interested in arguing about a personal God concept that somebody might hold within their own mind as a personal thing applying to themselves. Good luck to them if people hold such concepts in their minds. But those who are trying to sell their God concepts to people like me who don't buy into the bullshit, those people have a case to answer. Those people have something to clarify. Those people have some explaining to do. And that is what I mean by diatheism. I go right back to the basics and I point out to these people that as they keep wobbling on about their god, as they keep on yabbering on about God this, God that, God this, God that, yada, 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 I haven't got the foggiest notion what they mean with that word, what they mean with God. To me, they may as well go glurb this, glurb that, glurbity, 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 glurb, and it means absolutely nothing to me. And if they want to convince me of anything, the first thing they need to do is to make sure I understand what they mean when they say God. Now that is a position that, as I pointed out yesterday, has already got a name, is called Ignosticism, but I'm taking it further because I'm of the opinion that whenever somebody actually goes to the trouble of trying, you know, somebody who wants to push their idea of a God on me, if they want to sell it to me, if they want to convince me that their God exists, whatever that means. Every time I find that these people either eventually arrive at a concept, a God concept, that is completely incoherent, nonsensical, logically impossible, and I have to reject it out of hand, when I'm talking to a person like that, and they finally get around to explaining to me what they mean when they say God, I have to arrive at the conclusion, your God does not exist. Period. End of story. It's logically impossible. It does not exist. Alternatively, I sometimes end up arguing with people about their God thingy, and aware of the fact that I don't buy into these specific definitions, they fuzz their God up to the point where it could mean absolutely anything, absolutely everything, that God could be an identical to reality, for example. And I see no point in, ag again, I see no point in following them down that garden path. If there are terms like reality, that are perfectly adequate for using to relate to what these people mean when they say God, that I see no point in introducing that word into my vocabulary to mean something that I already have a perfectly good term for, reality, for example. So that is the position in a nutshell. That is where I stand. That is what diatheism ultimately boils down to. A refusal to be led down this garden path, a refusal to be entering into pointless discussion about something that people are either unable or unwilling to communicate properly to the person they are trying to convince. 
put that out of the equation and as far as I'm concerned there's nothing left to talk about. As one person pointed out in the comment section, what if you define God as something that is incomprehensible, not understandable, that cannot be captured by human language? Fine, but why are you wasting your time talking about it then? If it cannot be dealt with using human language, then everything you say about it is pointless. That is the realization that is at the core of what I call diatheism. That realization and a refusal to enter into this merry dance. Thank you for listening.